I had always wanted to do a PhD and I'd always wanted to be in research, but I was kind of always told that like I wasn't very smart and that was reinforced by my grades, which were not very good. So when I found out I got into this master's program, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do the PhD. I always was aiming to have a doctorate. So when you are in social services, learning is an ongoing thing. That's the nature of what we do. And so you really cannot grow if you don't develop yourself professionally and uh, personally, right? I was born in Germany. Uh, my parents were immigrants there, and this is uh, a part of my life that has influenced the rest of my life as I felt that I had to support uh, people that were dislocated or immigrants or refugees by all means. My name is Sadie Grimm. I am Louise Daly's great-granddaughter. She was very determined to go back to school and get a degree. That was like her big goal and she did that. She got, ended up getting two degrees and her second one she got when she was 93 years old. So I think it's just a very good symbol that you can continue learning for your whole life. Honestly, I had a pretty turbulent time at that um, part of my life. I couldn't afford to do a full year where you go to a university for the entire year and have to pay the entire year's tuition at once. I just didn't have that money at the time. So instead, I, I worked full time and I, every time I had enough money for a course, I, I bought a new course. I'm doing a critical discourse analysis on the response to the opinion piece article I wrote for CBC studying what Canadians' perceptions are of fat people. And that can be like in the context of healing or even like more general than that. The volunteer work that I do currently right now um, involves me doing personal mentoring specifically to international students. I also do a community radio show, all volunteer stuff. I've been doing it for the past two decades. I offer mental health counseling, but I also do mental health treatment, two different things. I do it um, voluntarily as well due to those who cannot afford it. The one that I really would like to mention is the Communitize project. It is about media literacy and critical thinking in the digital age. We prepared materials that uh, also included augmented reality for our students to have inclusive educational practices uh, for media literacy that is a very big issue in the Balkans area. My great-grandmother had two published poetry books and that she was very proud of those. So it was cool to see how the things she was learning and that she was passionate about, she applied to her daily life and implemented that into everything she did. Currently in Japan, I'm trying to understand uh, how mammals hibernate. And if we were able to get a mammal to hibernate, uh, we might be able to do that for humans. The dream would be to create a, a drug that you can inject into someone, almost like an EpiPen for an allergy. But if you could do that for instead uh, a heart attack or a stroke, quickly get someone to hibernate and then reduce the amount of cell death, um, save their life. I love learning. And what appealed to me about Athabasca was its flexibility. So I could work full time and go to school full time. It was something where I have lots of control where I can start, you know, this month and skip a month and continue on the next month if I so choose. So I had control that way. But the program itself, I did the uh, Bachelor of Professional Arts and Human Services and that's the only unique program we have in the country really. This is the only way I could go on with my studies at my 40s actually, assuming so many responsibilities and roles as a full-time professional and a mother to twins. <laughs> She was very appreciative of the way that the learning was done at Athabasca University and how she could do it from her house. My grandma would have to help her with the computer stuff lots of the time, but... I think that Athabasca pushes people to become more independent, organized, and resourceful. You have to know how to reach out when you need help. You have to know how to organize your schedule better. And that obviously helps when you're living alone in another country. Honestly, my friends and family are my number one fans. Also, I have been incessantly obsessed with this topic for a couple of years now. So like, the fact that they're still willing to listen to me is really nice. <laughs> Being recognized for an award as such, which is very, very prestigious, and only one person receives it yearly, as I understand it, I think is a special thing. And I'm glad that we are bringing it home to Kitchener this time. <laughs>
Uh, I keep uh, having uh, connections with most of my instructors from Athabasca University. I definitely would like to thank each one of them. There is no course that I have attended at Athabasca University that does not support me at the moment at my PhD. To see her being recognized this way is very important and um, very cool for us to see because we all saw how dedicated she was at getting her degrees and continuing her education, so it's really awesome that other people recognize that as well. Honestly, like Athabasca is amazing, and I, I've actually reached out to them before I got this award to try and promote it more because I truly think it, it did change my life, so I, I like Athabasca a lot.